What's going on everybody? C4 here today, continuing with the new unveiling of my Madden 18. Madden 17 rosters, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Houston Texans. If you're new, you don't know what these are, go check out my Philadelphia Eagles video where I explain in depth what everything you're going to see in these rosters. Essentially, quick cliff notes, they're my custom ratings, uh, free agency, NFL draft, first three rounds, rounds four, through undrafted free agent, there's still some, you know, I, I included guys, notable players, but every team's first three rounds have been included on these rosters. I will be releasing these for free at 35,000 subscribers, and we've been actually growing, you know, my subs were real, real dwindling. They're going back up a little bit, so we should probably, by the end of the month, probably get close to 35,000, so these rosters hopefully will be up by the end of the month. Um, as always, if you agree or disagree with one of these ratings, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. I've been following your guys' opinions throughout the release schedule of these, and I've made a bunch, well, not a bunch of tweaks, I think. I actually kind of pat myself on the back. I haven't had to make a bunch of major tweaks. We've had probably about, um, we're like four or five rosters out, and we've only had to modify maybe five players. So I think I've done a decent job, and hopefully I do a decent job here for the Texans. So without further ado, jump to the quarterback spot. We gave Deshaun Watson the lead dog, 73 overall. Uh, I upped his speed. Everyone that watches that big Madden 18 rookies, they just ignore the post that I pinned where I said I was more so just trying to get the base overall down of what I think their ratings are going to be. And then for their attributes, that's the key word, the attributes, I'm going to edit them for this. So Deshaun Watson had like 77 speed. Obviously, he wasn't going to stay at 77. So he bumped him up to an 83. But, um, oh, God, people send me messages. Fuck, I hate that shit. Um, but yeah, Deshaun Watson here. I think, you know, big fan of him. One of my favorite quarterbacks in this year's draft class. And I think, you know... Even though I'm a, I'm a boy, I like Tom Savage. I'm pulling for Tom Savage. I gave him a 72. And I think he may get the starting gig for you know at least the beginning of the season. It should be Deshaun Watson's team by the end of the year. And I'm pulling for him, man. Hopefully he can turn out and play pretty well. And we gave Whedon here a 68. And the running backs, we gave Lamar Miller an 86 overall. Some people thought he underperformed last year. You know, that's definitely a valid point. I mean, last season, Lamar Miller had 1,073 yards and five touchdowns. 200 yards roughly through the air. Um, I mean, the O-line wasn't spectacular. Let's not, in this, not, not that the O-line wasn't even, it wasn't a bad O-line, it wasn't spectacular, but the quarterback play. I mean, how much, every team's just got to stack the box. They weren't fearful of Brock Lobster back there throwing the ball. So I think now, maybe with a different dynamic at the quarterback spot, especially if Deshaun Watson gets in, Lamar Miller, should, the boxes should loosen up a little bit. Insert porn joke here. He could have a better productive 2017, better productive, phenomenal English. Uh, we give Albert Blue a 70. We have Foreman here with a 70, or Blue a 73, Foreman with a 70. Uh, as always, just because I, I did this all in depth at the very first episode, because we're in offline player management, I can't edit height weights, or some cases racial, like the, the skin color. So you have to do that in connected franchise mode. These are connected franchise mode rosters, because obviously Foreman's like 6 feet tall, 235 pounds. But, uh, yeah, he's a good guy. I think he could totally bump Alfred Blue for the top depth spot behind Lamar Miller. Uh, we got 69 from Hunt, 66 for Irvin, and 62 from Hillard. Running back Jay Proch, 81. One of the better blocking tight ends. Or, tight ends. One of the better blocking fullbacks in football today. So, an 81 is fair. I'm recording this first thing in the morning, if you can't already tell. Uh, for the wide receiver spot, we give DeAndre Hopkins a 90 overall last year. With maybe the worst starting quarterback in the NFL. Still emerged 78 Catches for 954 yards and four touchdowns. I think he was like a 93 in my old roster, so now he's getting down. A little regression to a 90. I, I, I had him originally as an 89, but I felt, man, come, I can't I can't whore, whore a guy that bad because he had Brock Osweiler as a starting quarterback. So we give Hopkins a 90. We gave Will Fuller a 76. Started like a bat out of hell in his rookie season. Kind of slowed down. Obviously, another guy that, you know, didn't get helped out by quarterback play. Finished the year, though, as a rookie with 47 catches, 635 yards, and two touchdowns. So that's good enough for a 76. Jalen Strong, 73. Braxton Miller, 73. Mumphrey, 63. And Wendell Williams, 62. Tight end, we give C.J. Fedora what's an 80 overall. This guy here is a very, very solid tight end. Finished the season last year with 54 catches, 559 yards, and four touchdowns. I think he's going to be a great safety net for Tom Savage or... Deshaun Watson, whoever emerges as a starting quarterback there. I think there's plenty of upside here, and he's definitely improved from his days of Iowa. Um, we got Griffin with a 71, Anderson 65, and Long Snapper with a 41. John Weeks, look at that guy, beast. Uh, left tackle, we gave Dwayne Brown an 86 overall pro football focus. Let's see here. This is what I use roughly for most offensive line grades, unless I know they suck. Uh, Dwayne Brown got an 85.6 for pro football focus, so that's about an 86 right there for the old, old dogs when he's healthy. One of the better vets, better left tackles in the NFL. 
69 for Clark, 64 for Gibson, and 60 for the most project player of them all in this year's draft class, Julian Davenport, prime candidate for practice squad. Could be bumped up a little bit. I could maybe give him like a 65. Uh, if, you know, maybe I will do that, actually. I'll give him a 65 at some point. Uh, left guard, but let's wait. There's no, he's not playing over Dwayne Brown anytime soon. Left guard, Xavier Suofilo gave him a 68 overall. Pro football focus, uh, limited action, gave him a 60. So, you know, I, I don't think he's really that bad to say he's 60. He was really good coming to UCLA. I'm pretty sure he was a center, though. I would just gave him a 68. Slate here with a 63. At center, Greg Manx with an 84 overall. Pro football focus rated him with an 85, which is really good for a guy that kind of came out of nowhere, especially when Nick Martin went down with injury earlier on. But he's an 84. We got Nick Martin here, who they invested a decent draft pick. I think he was a second rounder. Uh, last year, he is a 73, and we got Bergstrom with a 68. I wonder if they'll move one of these guys, maybe do a guard's position to get the most talent on the field as once. I don't know. Uh, right guard, Jeff Allen, 71, was a decent free agency signing from the Kansas City Chiefs. I remember I wanted Philly to get him. Uh, I guess he was, I think he was banged up a little bit last year. Uh, so that's a 71 here, and 62 for Josh Walker. And a right tackle, we have Derek Newton, who blew out both his knees, but when he is healthy, he's not a bad right tackle. He's serviceable. That's a 78. Jeff Adams here with a 73, and Kendall Lane with a 67. Um, yeah, man, I think they're going to have to swing one of those centers out to try to get the best potential out here on the offensive line. I mean, what you got, Manx, 6'4", 3 one. That can be like a slightly undersized right tackle if they needed it to be. But uh, got to wait and see. Looking at their starting depth chart on the offensive line, looks like it's going to be Dwayne Brown, Suofilo, Nick Martin, Jeff Allen, and Chris Clark. Uh, I don't know about that one. Anyways, jump to the defense side of the ball. We give JJ Watt a 98. Now I was good. He was at a 99. I gave his bump down his awareness. It's usually awareness is the easiest thing to fluctuate to lower uh, an overall grade and stuff. Just because he missed all of last year. Pretty much. I didn't feel comfortable giving him a 99, so I had to just give him a 98 for my rosters. But when healthy, he is undoubtedly the undisputed best defensive player in the NFL, in my opinion. But just because you missed the whole year, you don't get to hold on to your 99. It's a back injury. I mean, there are some worries that he might not be able to come back 100%. Back injury is really, really tough. But, I, man, he's a, he's a freak. I'm pretty sure he will pull through. Uh, so he's a 98. Uh, left defense, uh, right defensive end, we gave Clowney an 89. Clowney was a monster last season. Uh, really, you know, the sacks weren't mind-boggling. It wasn't like, oh, my God, this sacks numbers are crazy. I think he only had six. But he was very, very good against the run and f just fearful. Fearful for anyone that has to come up against him and a healthy J.J. Watt. How are you going to stop that? Who are you going to double-team? I mean, it's going to be – they're going to be a goddamn problem on the defensive side of the ball. we got the, the Canadian here, Christian Covington with a 70. Uh, Brandon Dunn, 67. Defensive tackle, DJ Reader. Now, this is what I want to get your guys' opinion on because I was talking about him in one of my draft videos for the Texans, and people said he was a monster. So I gave him a 72. I think he started out as a 68, but he jumped him up to a 72. But I could be persuaded to bump it up a little bit more. Uh, it's really tough to really grade nose tackles. Uh, Carlos Watkins come from Clemson, give him a 69. I really did like that pick. And then you have Charles, whatever, this guy, scrub. Left side linebacker, Zach Cunningham. Nice pickup there in the second round from Vandy. One of the, you know, obviously has to work on his tackling mechanics. But from, in, you know, a linebacker standpoint of getting side to side on the field, dropping back into coverage, he is one of the better ones in this year's draft class. And they need help here improving their outside linebacking course. So we gave him a 73. Scarlett here with a 66. At middle linebacker, Bernard McKinney, we gave him an 85 overall. Last season, he had five sacks. Two pass deflections, a forced fumble, over 100 tackles. I think he's really underrated. So we get him 85. I could potentially be persuaded to bump that up a little bit. But I think 85 is about fair. He's like a fringe top 10 inside linebacker in the NFL. Uh, I probably I probably put him in my top 10, but he'd be somewhere between you know eight and 10 if I'm being generous. Cushing here, old man Cushing with a 78 and Max Bola with a 71. Right outside linebacker, Whitney Merciless. We gave him an 87 overall. Led the team with seven and a half sacks last year. I think just over 50 total tackles. He had a forced fumble, a pass deflection. He's, he's a monster. I mean, this, this Houston Texan front seven is whew, pretty goddamn good. I, I don't think there's a better front seven in the NFL today. Uh, 65 here for Brian Peters. In the secondary, no more A.J. Boye. So they have old man Jonathan Joseph, who we gave an 82 overall. Uh, last year, Jonathan Joseph had... Oh, shit. Did he even have a pick? Didn't have a pick. Had nine pass deflections and just shy of 50 tackles. Old man Joe, so I think that's about 82. Unless he was, like, you know, putting in some Nandy Aswan numbers where, oh, he wasn't showing up with a stat sheet. Uh, I'm going to stay with an 82. Uh, we had Kareem Jackson, a 78. Last year, he had one interception, four pass deflections, and 62 tackles. 
Well, 78, man, he's serviceable. He's nothing special, but he's not a complete liability. We have Kevin Johnson, who we gave a 77 overall. This is more so based on his upside. I really do think he can establish himself and uh, maybe potentially fill the void that was left when A.J. Boye took the money and went to Jacksonville. I think he only had three starts last season, which, yeah, he only had three starts. That's, oof. But he had three pass deflections and 20-some tackles. I think there's plenty of upside here with Kevin Johnson. 68 for Robert Nelson Jr. and 62 from Denzel Rice. He's trash. He was here with Philly. He sucks. Uh, free safety, we have Andre Howell, who we gave a 78 overall last year. Had two interceptions, had seven pass deflections, a sack, and just shy of 50 tackles. Again, another serviceable guy, kind of like the mold of Kareem Jackson. Not a liability. Won't be bad back there. Corey Moore with a 71, and Ballantyne with a 68. And at strong safety, we have Eddie Pleasant, now the new starter, who had no starts last season, was able in limited snaps to get five pass deflections and just shy of 20 tackles. Losing Quentin Demps, he was a baller for him last year. Had Quentin Demps had six picks, nine pass deflections. So hopefully, you know, I think Texans are one of those teams. They're kind of emerging. They do have a lot of, you know, Bill Belichick tree type players. But I coaching tree, that is. Not literal, they put them in the ground, they grew up. But a Texans defense kind of reminds me of a team that's going to be able, just because of the scheme, just from the scheme, and just from how the coaches use the players, they're going to be better in Texas in Texas, yeah, I guess Houston. They're going to be better at Houston than they would be elsewhere. Kind of like when, you know, Patrick Chung went from New England to Philly. He was terrible in Philly, was good in New England, went back to New England from Philly, and was good again. So I think maybe A.J. Boye, that could be a risky signing for the Jags because maybe it was the Texan scheme that made him look so damn good because Quentin Demps wasn't anything special, and he had godly numbers. Those are pretty good numbers last season for Quentin Demps. So maybe Eddie Pleasant can come in and fill that in. Uh, kicker Nick Novak. We got two kickers. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Something Hawaiian. Uh, we got Nick Novak, 81. I'm pretty sure he came in as like a free agent. was fairly accurate. He had 85% field goal percentage. That's not bad. That's an 81. And punter Shane Leckler, the OG Madden punter with an 81. So there you go, guys. That is your Houston Texan Madden 18. Madden 17 rosters. If you agree or disagree with any of these ratings, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Share this video around because at 35,000 subscribers, I will be releasing these for free. Uh, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, it's C4 saying.